On today's episode, we have Simone and Chris with Future College Plans, Carlos Lampkin discussing new music, a new host that will be taking over the show with Ethna and Krishna premiering their new podcast. I'm Dylan Haupt and you're listening to The Puffcast. Greetings and welcome to episode two of the Pubcast. I am sitting here with my co-host of the day, Travis Davis. Say hi. Hey, what's up? So we have a great show lined up for you today. But first, we'll take a quick trip around the headlines. We have one article here from News for Jacks. City leaders will vote on a proposal that could change the landscape of downtown Jacksonville for developers. And the proposal would simplify the downtown zoning map in hopes of sparking new development in the area. My question to you, Travis, since you're on the show today as our co-host, do you think downtown can be developed more? I think it should be developed more and it will be developed. And I, I believe that it could, I, it could change the whole view of downtown Jacks. I believe that there's certain things that should be fixed and just getting a new renovated downtown area will be a first step into having a sort of utopia or looking utopia society, I guess you can say. And another article that I saw on News for Jacks, public subs can now be delivered to your door. No more waiting and long lines to enjoy a delicious turkey ham and cheese sub. I know, man. I I'm, I mean, it's like heaven, man, for real. Like, I, there, you, know, you don't know how many times I've been sitting and waiting at home. I'm like, man, I really don't want to drive. I really don't want to go. But I want a nice sub from Publix, not from Subway. From Publix. Publix is delicious. Every Everything at Publix is so good. Like, I would rather go to Publix than really anywhere else. I know, man. Like, Publix just has it down. Like, the customer service, everything. Like, I just love Publix. And in sports, as this is being recorded, the NBA Eastern Conference Finals are set to begin. And they will feature the Milwaukee Bucks and the Toronto Raptors. And the Western Conference Finals will feature the Golden State Warriors and the Portland Trail Blazers. So, Travis, do you keep up with the NBA? Um, Sometimes, you know, I really like I really like watching, I guess you could say, the Golden State Warriors. They're, they're one of my favorite teams. And don't call me a bandwagon, but, you know, I've, I've just loved that team and I love Steph. So... You know, I just, you know, I don't, I'm not as a die, I'm not like a die hard basketball fan, but I watch basketball here and there, you know. I'm going to, I'm going to look into some of the games. Thanks, Travis, for um, being Thank our co host of the day. You'll be back in a couple interviews, right? Yeah, yes, sir. Definitely. All right. Well, that sounds great. We are going to transition now to our round table segment. So stay tuned. Welcome to the roundtable segment of the Pubcast. I am here in the studio with Simone and Chris. Say hi, guys. Hello. Hey. I wanted to talk about college since we're all graduating next year. And my first question to you is, how has the four-year experience been for you here at DA? Um, my four years here have been very challenging. Um, but overall, I really liked it and I learned a lot. My four years being here has been very rigorous, but still accomplishing so since we're graduating is starting to head out of high school i want to know what colleges are the both of you going to next year um i will be attending the alabama state university in the fall and i will be attending boston conservatory at berkeley during the fall so our first question since a lot of freshmen and underclassmen want to know this how was the process of getting into the college you're going to next year So for me, my application process was actually pretty simple at first. Um, I just made sure to do anything I could ahead, like essays and um, recommendation letters. I tried to do that like over the summer and then um, apply so that I could get something before winter break so that I wouldn't be like stressing at the last minute. But um, after that, I had to audition in Alabama so um, that was actually a really fun time it was more like a class and it gave me a chance to test out the college as well as have them look at me 
too. So that was actually really fun. So I know Chris is headed in a similar direction going to college for an art-based degree. So Chris, how was your experience with getting into the college you're going to next year? And remind us of where you're headed. Um, I will be attending um, the Boston Conservatory at Berkeley um, for a BFA, BFA in dance and a minor in business. Well, the um, dance degree, they have a lot of vernacular studies, such as um, dance composition, music that I'll be learning, um, dance, probiotic, um, stretching the body, learning about the body, uh, and as well as dancing six classes during the week. Um, the audition process, it was not really that challenging. I had very had a lot of teachers to help me out and through the process and making making sure that I was secured and everything was in the right path. Um, also, one of my teachers, Miss um, Barrett, she's one of the um, on the board with Berkeley, and she got she d- um, wrote my recommendation letter. So that was a really big thing, and that really pushed me to go to Boston Conservatory as well. And also, this the school and the classing for um, when I did the audition. It was, like Simone said, it was more like a class, and I felt more like I could mess up and, like, I could try. And to see that the um, teachers was, they were saying that this is also an audition for us as well, which it showed because, like, I saw, like, them wanting to teach and how they would teach, and I saw the curriculum being demonstrated and the dancing, and I just loved it. So how is getting into college going into a more art-based path different from getting into college for a career-based path like business? Basically, as a dance major, you still have to take your um, math classes, reading classes, all of that. Um, But on top of that, you still have to take your ballet, modern, jazz, hip-hop, composition classes, and rehearse for upcoming concerts and things like that. So it's basically what we've been trained to do here at DA, which is both arts and academics, but it's not a traditional career path. So it's not like you're just handing in a resume. You have to show that you're talented through an audition. Yes, you have to show them everything you've learned and also how you work, too. All right. So, Chris, you're also going in for dance, right? Yes. The college you were going to, was the process a little bit different from what Simone was going for, or is it all the same? It's all the same. Um, Just a little different in terms of, like, studies and dance classes and whatnot, because Boston um, focused more contemporary dance than most colleges, and that's the one they prevail at the most. Also, Boston, they also have a lot of other different studies that they look at such as like musical theater because they're really stronger than that um like singing see if you could sing that could be another add-on to the course that you can take and also since they are partnered with berkeley that they did a merger back back in 2014 i believe um you can also take classes at the berkeley um college of music and like have like get um music training vocal training like the music production so Like, the process is somewhat the same, but the one big thing that make it different is at Boston, everything is, like, ventured in itself and, like, in the organization around itself. And so that once uh, once we do graduate, we have, like, somewhat of a foundation to go out and, like, pursue in a career with a job. Thank you, Simone and Chris, for coming on to today's roundtable segment. Do you want to give any shout outs before you leave? I want to shout out to the man upstairs. He helped me get through this all. It has been so stressful, but with him, I got through. Um, I would like to shout out myself for pushing myself for the last four years, for always being committed, always keep going even when I didn't want to even when I thought it was over but it wasn't I kept going so I would like to thank myself and I would also like to thank God as well and 
all my peers who actually has shaped my mindset, my perspective and views upon life and all everything that I went through for the past four years and made me to a better person who I am. So I can I would think like to thank them. All right. Thanks for coming on and happy graduation. to the entertainment portion of the podcast. I am sitting here with Carlos Lampkin. Say hi. Hello there. Give the audience a quick introduction of those who don't know you. I'm Carlos Lampkin. I usually go by KJ. I'm a senior here at Douglas Anderson, and I'm here for guitar. As some of you may know, I play trumpet in the second band, and I'm also the guy that wears really bright shoelaces, if you didn't know. So, Carlos, you're a big fan of music, right? Heck yeah. Guess which song right now is the number one song in the country. Um, sadly, but not sadly, but also sadly, is Old Town Road. So the song Old Town Road, you are correct, it first appeared on the country charts before appearing on the overall Hot 100 charts. So I wanted to get your take about this big debate about whether Old Town Road is really considered country. To be honest, um, the music is all up to the discretion of the listener. Music has a lot of... Uh, It's really vague, so there's really a lot of things people can think of what they're listening listening to. Like, for example, when some people say uh, Old Town Road is trap and other things country, or maybe it's a mixture of both. Who knows? Somebody could call it jazz for some reason. Um, There are people like that. Don't worry about it. But um, it really, it's just up to the consumer and what they think. Why do you think the song Old Town Road has been really successful? Because now we even see it on the... Um, radio charts now. The radio stations have been playing it from top 40 to the hip-hop stations. I'd say either because Billy made a comeback, what is what some people would say. Either Billy made a comeback or it's just really catchy, kind of. I mean, like, it's not really expect. It kind of came out of the blue, to my, in my opinion. Like, it was just normal music coming out, people releasing albums, and then the Old Town Road came out, and everybody was like, what the heck is this? So I think everybody just liked it, and it just caught on, and Hopped on the music train, you know? So now I wanted to move on to another artist that has released some new music, and that is Taylor Swift with her new single, Me. And a lot of her fans were streaming the song and competing, so that way it took the number one spot from Old Town Road. And I wanted to ask you a question about this since you're really into music. Do you think we've lost the sense of enjoying music? And, you know, do you think we're so kind of... We're, we're only focused on being number one and sort of topping the charts, topping streaming. Do you think we've lost our sense of just enjoying music for what it is? In a sense. I mean, like, the artists and stuff, I think a lot of them have. Like, um, all these new people coming out, I really don't call that music. Um, like, in some senses, <coughs> it, might sound, it may sound pretty cool. I know a lot of people that listen to I'll say like the beat of a song instead of the lyrics when to be honest the lyrics are what really matters it really matters what you're like hearing kind of and a lot of people were just starting to I think say things that just rhymes people could say oh that was really cool or just be clever with their words when in reality it makes no sense um Taylor Swift's new song is really positive so I really don't have a problem with it and plus, the video was really interesting, Interesting, in my opinion. Yeah, I really enjoyed the video, too. And it had, like, 70 million views in, like, 24 hours, which was crazy. But um, that is all the time we have for on today's entertainment segment. Do you have any final words, Carlos? Uh-huh, not really. It's all chill. Are you ready for graduation? I cannot wait to graduate. I'm going to JU on a full ride. And I already have my whole college plan, like, planned out, everything. I'm going to Tokyo for my master's for two years. Um, I just can't wait. And I will be graduating, too. Yeah. So that means that somebody else has to take over for the PubCast, and that person will be coming up next, so stay tuned. So I'm here with Emma, who is taking over for the PubCast next year. Say hi. 
Hi, everyone. How's it going? I've had an amazing time building this podcast for Douglas Anderson, but now it's time to send it off to someone else since I'm graduating this year. So, Emma, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're planning to do with this podcast. Um, I'm Emma. I'm a freshman who's entering the sophomore class next year. Um, The format of this podcast will continue to be the same, but I'll just be the new voice that you'll get used to listening to here on the podcast. So since you are hosting this podcast next year, tell the audience something that you can highlight about yourself that will bring something new to the show. Well, I'm new to the show as well as I am to the school, and I'm still learning a lot of things about life and the culture here at Douglas Anderson. But if I had to say one thing about what I'm bringing to the table, it's that you'll be watching me grow throughout this process, and I'm very fortunate to have this opportunity to host. Since a lot of people are going to be listening to this, tell us more about the things you like in general, whether it's your favorite movies, songs. Um, well, I don't have a favorite movie at the moment, but I do have the Jonas Brothers Sucker stuck in my head right now. And I've been listening to it on the Puffcast FM playlist, which is now live on Spotify. So, Well, yeah, one of my favorite songs is um, Old Town Road by Lil Nas X. I, ne- I never get tired of hearing that one. <laughs> so um, thanks, Emma, for coming on. I'm sure a lot of people are going to enjoy listening to your interviews and everything you have to offer. Bye. Thanks for having me. So you just listened to the interview with Emma. She's going to be the new host of the PuffCast. So, Travis, how excited are you for Emma? Bro, I am so, 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 so excited. She's such a talented young lady, and I feel like she's going to really bring the PuffCast, like, even higher to another degree. I feel like she has such a beautiful future ahead of her, and I think that in the future years, we're going to have something well and beautifully established exactly and she's a sophomore she's gonna be a sophomore next year she's a freshman right now so she's gonna have um three years with this thing yep yep and a lot of time a lot of time and for me i, I just started this puff cast i just started setting this up for the school um so now i'm passing it on to somebody who is legitimately gonna take it over and who is committed to broadcasting yeah yeah man I think she's perfect. She's a perfect she has a perfect position, you know, for this role. So And speaking of new hosts and new shows, um Ethan Elkins and Krishna, their interview will be played next and they are going to premiere a podcast about film called The Cinecast, which is spelled C I N E and then cast. So pretty simple name, pretty clever name just like the Puffcast. So, Travis, are you excited about that? I'm very excited about that. I'm a film lover myself, so I would love to indulge and listen to their cinecast and just learn about how other people feel about certain films. All right. Well, you're going to listen to that right now, so stay tuned. And welcome back to the PuffCast. I am sitting here with Ethan Elkins. And What's up, guys? He is going to be the host of next year's Cinecast. So tell us all about it. So basically, the Cinecast is a podcast where we talk all things cinema. All right. So we are getting a lot of shows lined up here on the PuffCast. This is the second show we have. So we have the original podcast, which is what you're listening to right now. And we're going to have your show that's coming up next. So you're going to dive into the world of cinema. Isn't that right? Exactly. Give us a sneak preview of what you're going to discuss about cinema. Well, basically, we're going to talk about the ethics behind the movies we like and the ethics behind the movies we don't. And um, briefly just break them down, you know, talk uh, problems, solutions, stories, all that. You know, we're just really going to dive in and hope to uncover some stuff we've never learned before. Seems like a really cool idea, and we are really glad to have you on the PuffCast Radio Network as one of our official shows. And you even have a co-host too, right? 
Yes, I do. So let's get Krishna. Yeah, let's get Krishna on the mic. Hello, hello, hello. Krishna, you are going to be Ethan's co-host. That's correct. Explain to me what you're going to do as Ethan's co-host. Well, it's really just like a a dynamic between the two of us just talking about movies we like, cinema, different eras in cinema history, um, different interactions between films and how they've changed our perspective on filmmaking as student filmmakers, and maybe also just like the world of cinema in general. So, All right. Well, we're really excited to have you on, and we are excited to listen to your show next year because the whole world will be listening. Thanks, man. All right. Thanks for stopping by. Amen. Thank you. And that is all for today's episode. Make sure you follow me at Dylan on Air on Instagram and Twitter, as well as Pubcast Radio, where you'll find updates on future episodes and more. This is Dylan signing off. Next episode, you'll have Emma as your host, and we'll see you here next time. Bye, guys. Bye.